and sip guys, this channel today we're gonna check out Vox Residence in Sentul. Let's go! Okay, so we are now along Jalan Sentul Perdana The main circulation pathway that cuts across the entire Sentul And the site is actually located right next to this junction where it connects into the Kampong area Right into Duke And it was my very first time using Duke Highway to come into this address And it's amazing lah Because it really saves a lot of time compared to the version that comes in from Jalan Impo side of thing. And as predicted, we kind of estimated that these addresses will be booming Somewhat like Gomba You can see a lot of brand new developments actually taking place That's why within the surrounding right now, you can really see a mixed typology where on the same street, you will have kampong, rumah papan and all Then you will have high rise coming up Then you will have old buildings, the old shop offices And right in front will be the local school already But before all that, let's go and check out the sales gallery Okay, so first of all, let's get our coordinates right This will be the location of Vox Residence which is in between, right in front of the junction of Jalan Kampung Bandar Dalam and Jalan Sentul Pasa. Okay, so right in front, this will be the temple in front and just look at the whole street here, right? The main observation here is the education components. SK Sentul 1, Sentul 2, Sentul Pasa, Peng Ming, then you have Convent, then you have Wesley, then you have La Salle, then you have Chiman, then you have Sentul KL. Then Chonghua Independent High School is also here, right around the corner. So the whole area is just filled with schools. Like. And that's a good and also bad part for this street, where during the peak hours, especially in the morning when you need to fetch the kids to school, during the evening when you need to pick up your kids from school, <sighs> combo that with the series of traffic light on the main Sentul Pasa street, it's going to be pretty hectic in terms of congestion. That's why this new road directly into Duke Highway, this is a deal breaker in my opinion. And this will be the project that we're going to check out today. This is a freehold project. In total, there will be only 587 units, which is very low in density in comparison to what we have in the surrounding here. And this will be the main junction coming in straight away this will be the inner road to the development shared between another project and this will be the main entrance so coming in is a one way in into the elevated car park at the side you need to turn around the project before you can reach the drop off before exiting the project again there's a dedicated one way in one way out and coming in there will be one entrance into the lower ground car park and then this entrance then will be connecting over to the elevated car park above but one important thing to take note because of the form of the sides there's not enough length so there will be insufficient height for one full ramp to take place therefore there will be a split ramp system therefore be very mindful when you pick the units if you need to pick a unit that's slightly higher in levels so you get a car park at a lower level maybe you want to consider that also this one will be very interesting because for the smaller units which is about 600 over square feet right they are actually giving two car parks so that is something that the team is trying to do differently so after you make a turn around this will be the drop off then this will be the elevated car park this will be the facility deck connecting over to the residential tower and right above there will be another rooftop facility So this will be the ground floor facility plan and you can see this is the guard house coming in right so after you make a turn this will be the drop off so right in front, there will be a jogging path here And this is very interesting, besides the usual lift lobby When you come in, right, this will be the lift lobby At the side will all be facilities Where you have the cafe, you have the grocer, you have the AV room And what's interesting here is on this green part here This is a golf simulator, that's nice And this is what the AV room is going to look like on ground floor That's nice You have a small little garden at the side here But what's cool is this So this is a hidden garden 
which is located right behind the project and for this this is a jogging path that connects across the project around hmm interesting on the facilities deck then you will have the standard things such as the swimming pool this will be the kids pool this will be the bio pond so this is something different that they're doing and it's located right next to the play area closer to where the kids hang out la. so this is going to be good a mini amphitheater here right inside this will be the location of the gym another bio pond here and this will be the multi-purpose hall so the pool so this is about 40 meters slab pool with an infinity edge at the side and you have a sunken lounge right here at the rooftop then, then you will have the sky lounge, you will have the outdoor sky gym, you will have the lawn area just to hang out, you will have the urban farm area, then the barbecue area at the side. And I like how the team actually positioned the tower away from the junction because this is going to be the source of noise therefore they use the facility there at the side stacked against that in between so you will have the furthest distance of the residential tower away from the junction so that's nice also the facility deck here being at this side has better orientation compared to this side where you're gonna face existing old apartments here so that's a rationale behind and i also really enjoy that they located the entrance behind to the private road so this is actually way safer i can actually turn in a distance only be before i turn back home and when i come out i can still take a direct turn out into jalan sento basha if i want to but this gives me a direct access right over to duke highway now let's just run through the types of layout the smallest one you will have 667 square feet two bed two bath but this is the one where it comes with two car park some comes with one or some comes with a tandem the two car park units for such a size then becomes a very attractive one in my opinion especially for investment la. but they do have other sizes which is 839 and 947 so the sizes are a little bit more on the compact side of things but let's just check out the the floor plan layout so per floor there will be 14 units sharing five leaves all together so when you come out from the leaf lobby there will be a fire partition door connected into a double loaded corridor which means you have units on both sides the larger units all face this side the smaller units on the other and this will be rather interesting this is what they call a live apartment and the concept for this is due to the size being a little bit smaller a little bit more compact on the residential side therefore they have this concept of having a somewhat like a lounge but they don't want to call it a lounge it's like this big unit where you can host your family and friends then you have a kitchen that can accommodate up to 30 people you can either hire your private chef for celebrations here okay so that's the main concept behind the live apartment but you just look at the rest of the renderings it's pretty impressive like the lobby is going to look like that and you have the lounge it's going to look like that nice and this will be a unit i'm going to check out today this is a b2839 square feet three bed two bath and when you come into the unit straight away you have a kitchen tucked at the side a dining then the living connected to the balcony space the aircon latch at the side with a proper access that's nice then going in this will be a common shared bathroom then you have three bedrooms here the master bedroom with an suite bedroom two bedroom three and what's great is because this is located at the side and the remaining types that is similar also is all at the corner units therefore the bedroom three has a window with privacy instead of just facing the corridor all the time okay that's nice So this should be the B2 show unit that we're going to check out today and the setting is somewhat like a hotel because at the front you don't have an area to put you in your shoe cabinet and things like that the door is right at the entrance so the clearance of the door is 900 mm so they are giving a 1 meter by 2.4 meter door that's great and coming in straight away you have the kitchen you will have the dining you have the living connected to the balcony mm. so my first comment coming in everything's look luxurious like always from their project right so for this project they are giving fully furnished package where whatever you see is almost whatever you get besides all the soft furnishings all the deco items loose loose items all are not given therefore please always check with the salesperson on what will be provided okay anyway next to that then this will be the kitchen area it's an open type of kitchen so when you do heavy cooking 
yes the whole unit will smell like it lah unfortunately but the size is huge so here you have the fridge and you have the L configuration wall to wall distance here is 2.27 and this to this is about 2.54 meters and that includes the washer and dryer here and what's nice is uh, they are doing and providing all these cabinets themselves so all these are in-house which is part of their strength of this developer you're gonna get this top as well with the backsplash it looks so luxurious look at the pattern of it Woo. then you will have a hood and hop by ruby this is a two burner along with the hood here this looks so modern <laughs> For ceiling height, it's going to be around 3 meters. And the ongoing selling price for this exact unit is about 620,000, which is not too bad actually. Then, almost for the whole unit, they will be providing this timber laminated flooring, which looks really good, along with all the furnitures that they will be providing, including the TVs and everything else. Anyway, the width from wall to wall here is about 3.1 meters. Very comfortable, connected to this. <laughs> amazing height sliding door connecting to the balcony so let's go check it out so coming on into the balcony uh the width here is nice this is 956 mm then the width is about the same just like the living room is about 3.1 meters but what i want you guys to observe here will be the traffic condition so this is the exact location of the site itself and this is what we're going to see on site. So there will be a lot of cars next to the junction. And the unit will start from level 8 and above. So you will not directly see it. But it is the, almost the sound that you're going to get. Like. Right in front there will be SJKC, Sento Basa. And there will be a series of school right after them. Okay. This is a KL Go charging station for all the buses. And then this will be all the Kampong houses already. Anyway, this will be the aircon latch. And it's built with uh, ease of access in mind. That's great. Then you will have glass and steel handrail. And I think at the highest floor, the view here is going to look amazing. You know, on this side, you can actually see KL skyline. Well, this location here is seriously very, very close to KL. Then for the glazing, they will have a slight level of tint. And let's test out the noise cancellation. Very good. Solid. So when you come in, you can still add some twists to the unit here and there. But generally, if you want to move in, you can already move in. So first time home buyers or you're an investor, right? It does save a lot of time and effort. If you're not really into property, right? Furnishing the unit is actually a hassle but the main difference here compared to the surrounding project like we have one next door that's called Sento Point you have a mixed development typology and that seems to be a common typology for projects around this stretch due to the development based on one main road just like Gomba so when you have one main road which is the main lane in this spinal configuration right then you branch out from the spine into relevant developments the only way to control traffic will be traffic lights and you have commercial area just stack next to the main road because that would be the maximum exposure and because of that this developer took a very different approach because they go full residential on Vox residence which is this project and with a lower number of units in comparison to the rest it's a different twist lah hmm then coming out from the living room this will be the dining area for four and when we go into the corridor this will be the location of the shared bathroom so they adopted a different twist usually the feature wall is the wall next to the shower that's the conventional method but this they put it on this side this looks so good right and whatever you see here besides all that is exactly what you will get right you will have the johnson swiss basin johnson swiss wc along with the mirror shower screen shower mechanical ventilation and got one more type at the corner units they will have the window on this side for door frames then they are using steel door frames with the shadow gap so the joints between the frame and the brick wall will be very nicely done switches at a very friendly height that's great then the width of the corridor here is 1.16 meters next to the bathroom then this will be the first bedroom they're going to check out
The size of this room is about 2.7 by 3.7 meters. It can fit in a queen size bed and you still have lots of space for circulation. So that's great. And you can see that the laminated timber floor continues all the way. Then you have a window connected to the facade wall. The bottom panel is not openable, but this one is and they feel solid. Okay, so it's only half the wall. The other half remains solid. After that, this will be bedroom two. Hmm, this is interesting. Because conventionally, you will have two bedrooms facing the facade line. One unit will be sacrificed and it will be placed within the layout facing the voids. Therefore, the daylighting quality is not going to be that great. The size also will always be compromised as well. But for this project then, I like that all bedrooms can fit in a queen size bed at least. So the wall to wall width here is about 2.15 meters. Then the length here is about 3.5 meters. After you put in a queen size bed, there will still be space for a very nice wardrobe. That will be the facade wall and it depends on whether you pick the corner units or the intermediate units. If it's an intermediate unit, you face a solid wall outside but you still get to enjoy the privacy. For corner units then, you still get nice view lah. Last but not least, this will be the principal bedroom and the principal bath on this side. I like this width. So this width is 3.5 meters. It's about one and a half feet longer than the living space, which it should. I always think so. That's why after you put in the king size bed also, it still feels very majestic as you will have so much space space around to an extent the interior designer can also have space to do things like this well technically i prefer a bedside table uh, but yeah this is mainly because they have a lot of space and this will be the unit with the window facing at the facade line as well it's going to be a very large window so that is great this is going to be so good and now going into the ensuite bathroom almost similar treatment you will have the feature wall around the basin and the basin is by Johnson Swiss WC by Johnson Swiss you have a structure here to put in your things how I wish they could furnish a vanity cabinet as well but shower screen full height wall tiles with the mirror and I guess that's all for the unit. Solid, right? I can almost imagine when you get the keys, right? You just need to stop by to get your, your cutleries and your baju and your luggage bags, right? And you are good to go already. <laughs> anyway, let's go check out the site and the surrounding. So now we are right in front of the site, which is right next to the sales gallery. And this will be the location of the entrance okay so when you come in you turn then you'll be an entrance going into the project already okay so this will be the tower at the side that will be the main entrance and this is the road that is shared between this condominium here okay so for some of the units that is facing in front please do take note because there are some projects around but this is the current condition of the local roads as well so this is still a local road setting where it's a one in one out and you have kampung houses low rises all around at the side right but this is the main road that connects over to duke highway so if you use that road a lot right this project makes a lot of sense and there's an internal road as well that allows you to skip the school before going back into Sento pasa itself mm. And now you can see the progress at site. They are reaching level 7 already. So works are progressing really, really fast. Which is always part of their signature for this developer. That's great. So now the main thing we're going to test is because this project is a full residential project, there won't be any commercial activities within. Therefore, if you need any commercial support, you need to walk around. So we are going to try walking to Sento Point, which is one of the main commercial area in proximity lah. so behind you will have the old shop lots and things like that there will be a temple there will be a petrol station right opposite yeah so let's walk so as we are walking there are proper pathways and the road widths are huge so you can see now because surrounding is a lot of construction going on a lot of trucks but it's a three lane by three lane. You will have proper walkways on both sides. That's nice. Too bad it's not shaded lah. 
but this is the immediate neighboring building that is right next to site so please do take note of that as well and now passing Sri Saujaya, one Sento, we are now right in front of Sento Point and here you will have all the commercial support that you need lah. so right in front you will have the mama you will have the gym anytime fitness you will have coffee bean, you will have Starbucks, you will have all the Speed Mart, E Mart, CU Mart and right behind us this will be McDonald's so this will be M Arisa, M Centura but I gotta say the level of infrastructure within this stretch of Sento itself feels way more comfortable compared to Sento Pasa those that are the older areas lah because this feels very nice because all the new developments are actually taking place lah which is also a concern uh, we'll talk about that later and I guess that's all for this episode it's now time for Sean's Take 3 on 3 So for the three things I like, number one will be the location of Sentul because this has always been a favourite for a lot of locals for a few main reasons lah. Number one is the distance to the city centre, actually this is seriously within the city of KL itself, it's not too far. We are just one junction away from Jalan Ipo and Jalan Gending Klang and that connects you to the rest of the city already. Number two then, it's a very matured neighbourhood, that's why you can really see a lot of schools around this simple stretch of Jalan Sento Pasa. Then in terms of public transportation, too bad there's no direct access for this part of Sento itself but the closest one you still have an MRT station 10 to 15 minutes away from site and based on the team's feedback a lot of locals actually take the free shuttle bus to the train station every day and you got to enjoy all those components right at a very competitive price for housing so that's a charm for Sento as a location then the second thing I like will be the approach by the developer to this project in comparison to the surrounding project so what I really like is the approach to the project is very simple, it's very direct. So it's a very low density project, pure residential, in total 587 units only. And it's freehold. And these components really stands out compared to the surrounding project, like One Sento, Sento Point, M Centura, and M Arisa. So in terms of density, in terms of the mixed development, in terms of the access, in terms of the size of the project, I find the position of project to be very accurate. Especially when they add a little bit design innovations into the project which is a point number three that I like so first of all when you look into the project architecturally they use the facility that as a buffer between the residence tower and the junction then they position the facilities right in front compared to the one facing Sri Saujaya for privacy reasons that's nice then at the ground floor just when you think that it's going to be a normal drop off then you go to the lift lobby right no they actually extended the coverage of the ground floor to have facilities there such as the lounge and the AV room which is somewhat going to be like a cinema then you have the golf simulator as well at ground floor so that's interesting then when the site is not really that big right they even squeeze out a secret garden not leaving any space to waste even for car park as well they could have just everything just built on grade right but they say maximize the contour of the land to, to build a lower ground car park so for those who get that lower ground car park right it's going to be so convenient and easy then at the facility floor again it's the standard facilities where you have swimming pool and gym but I like they add a, again that simple twist right to have a bio pond next to the sunken area for kids playground so when kids play with it they can still go and check out the bio Pond and they leave the site closer to Sri Sajaya empty again for privacy reasons. Then at the rooftop, how I wish there could be a pool structure because that would be great for investment. But nevertheless, looking at the surrounding, it's all very, very low density. Then next to the project, right in front, right, it's all going to be low rise rumah kampung and old building structures like schools commercial areas and things like that all the new ones are actually behind the project so that's great in terms of view you're going to get one of the best view and it's directly facing kl skyline but the smartest thing to me like personally i am very attracted to the two bedroom unit the 667 square feet unit because it's a two bedroom unit but what they did to the secondary room or the tertiary room the room that is usually 
sacrifice because it always suffers from poor lighting and poor ventilation because if you look into the floor plan they design in a void across every two units so somewhat right it's like a mini semi-d for each pair and that allows bedroom 3 for the type b's and type c's and bedroom 2 from type a to have a very nice window suddenly with a very sizable window the quality of space change and when they just add that to have a minimum area to accommodate a queen size bed right the whole Typology change so the 667 square feet one combo with their open kitchen concept that they have used all this while, right? It's going to be very, very nice. Plus, it's all fully finished again, that stands out among the rest. They even have all small, small architectural elements and the right architectural language for the fire escapes, for the main entrance. Then you have the van block design across. Then you have a new twist of the feature wall being at the basin area instead of the shower area. All these very small details of improvements. I love it. However, for the three things I don't like, is also pretty much the same like Sento as a location because a lot of locals love it and you have a lot of schools is ready to live in but the micro site elements to me you have a few things to take note of lah. the first thing is the congestion due to the schools like, like right after lunch you're going to face a lot of congestion because in one same time there will be a few schools together letting out all their students right so all parents and drivers will be picking up the kids it's terrible the congestion is real that happens in the morning as well and due to the typology of the development of the address using one main spinal road only so because of that the only way to control traffic will be traffic lights therefore the congestion again now for this project this is located right next to a junction that can be rather noisy at times and surrounding the project is still all kampong setting and kampong setting it's good for now but we will never know in the future right, there will be brand new projects so for the junction i think the developer has done its best by locating the tower furthest away from the junction using the facility deck as the buffer then this location itself because this is directly next to a junction connecting to duke highway so to me that's the biggest hack for this exact setting itself it is now so easy and near to get into the project and personally i tried it this morning it's great then the second thing i have concern of will be that impression of oversupply due to the speed of new projects so if you look into this stretch of project only where you have one sento sento point m Centura and m arisa then you have this new vox residence right in one glance you have all the tower packed into one cluster itself therefore it looks very dense but if you look at the surrounding the whole sento is all low rise so it depends on your focal point do you focus on those only or if you focus at a larger area of Sento because if you were to think about it the latest launch for this project is about three to four years ago and all of the projects here are sold out so it's going to be very very interesting like a three bedroom unit prepared for a surrounding unit here is about thousand eight for an unfurnished unit and it's about two thousand two to two thousand five for a fully furnished unit so technically will there be any new projects coming into the site it's going to be highly dependent on the performance of this project launch la. then for the third thing there will be minor design things that i wish they could work on but it's due to limitation of the site la. so first of all will be the scissors ramp for the elevated car park because the site itself don't have enough length for a full ramp to take place if you were to put in a full ramp there will be not enough car parks then you have more stories of elevated car parks then so it's going to end up the same so their approach to this we have the split ramp in place where you go level 2 2a 3 3a and the team knows that therefore they're going to compensate in terms of the smaller units of the 667 square feet ones some of them are allocated two car parks so it's either two side by side or in tandem so i think that is going to be the fastest selling ones because it really stands out then how i wish rooftop will have swimming pool but they don't have but to me it's just a simple change because i am very confident the view on top is going to be magnificent looking across KL skyline Oof. and i guess that's all for this episode it's a rather direct rather simple yet with a twist of design innovations within the project itself and do i like the project I actually like it but more of an investment product because units here mostly they want three bedrooms because it's a very family oriented setting but personally if you visit the show unit of the 667 square feet one is actually very nice just because of that extra window that opens up the whole experience of space
Hmm. And from this developer, always their kitchen cabinetry has always been their main selling point. Combo with a fully furnished package. It's going to be so convenient But just be very mindful when you pick units Because you got to really pay attention to the location of your car park And I guess that's all for this round Thank you very much for watching If you really like this episode, like it, share it And even subscribe for more information like this Until next time, this is Sean Tan Ciao